Well, I'm Patrick Stewart, and we're talking to Playboy. I'm Jonathan Ames, and we're, we're talking to Playboy. I can quote some Shakespeare to you, which might be a little bit questionable. In a French lesson that the Princess of France is having, she speaks about le foot de la cunt. La foot de la cunt? De la cunt. Don't look at me so offended like that. The man wrote it. Ribaldry is as old as the world. Every time they find one of these caves with these ancient drawings inside, I know they're going to find something sexual eventually. One day we're going to see a little bit of, you know, obscene graffiti in those caves. You yeah. can't tell me they weren't doing it. Holy shit, Walter fucking Blunt! Oh shit! No, no. People knew that to fornicate was a part of life. I wish we were more relaxed about, you know, one's needs. And I think they were less judgmental about the body in Shakespeare's time. The way that it's glinting off your ball spot, it's just like something out of the Renaissance. What comedians actually for the last 25, 30 years have mm -hmm. been doing, they have been in the vanguard mm -hmm. of saying what it is permissible to talk about. And now they have been joined by female comics. Now women get up there and can talk about bodily functions and sexual desire and their weird obsessions and make it funny. Could I speak with you this time? I mean, I am a senior producer. It would be inappropriate. Rosalie has been with me 20 years. There's been so much truth in comedy that it helps people not be afraid to maybe be themselves, because these comedians are kind of talking about what's not often talked about. Genital warts. Uh -huh. I think of Louis C.K. as being a sort of groundbreaking inspiration for shows like Blunt Talk. I suddenly flashed to Richard Pryor, the great film he did live on the Sunset Strip, where he was talking about some man is talking about, I met this guy, Richard Pryor, and he was looking for cocaine and he only had one thing to say, where can I get some more? Where can I get some more? <laughs> the ratio of cocaine to speed is just right. Yes, sir. Can I have some more? Professor X? I've never been asked that question before. He was probably on painkillers, actually, and may have been a little addicted. I could also imagine him taking mushrooms, and then when he reaches out to all the people, it could oh, become oh. Like, like a huge, I don't know, musical. You know, normally it's like t tapping into all their <clears throat> stress and anxiety and world issues. But then if he took mushrooms, it could become like, you know, a fantasy or something. Now that would have been a scene that I would love to have seen Brian Singer direct. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I smile too damn much to get that mad, but I, I do a, an excellent version of it and straight out of content.